Good morning, good morning and welcome to my channel. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet. It is a pleasure to be here with you this morning as it is every morning. You know, we get into the word of God and um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you feel ready, sometimes you don't, you know, but it is the word and it is our foundation. It is our food. It is, it is that which we eat. Yeah. And um, so regardless of how you feel, I find that if you follow your feelings, you know, there's certain things you just wouldn't do. If I followed my feelings, I'd be vegging out somewhere with, you know, a book, reading, eating chocolate and drinking soda probably, or, you know, just um, spread out in front of the television, watching some foolishness or scrolling through my phone. But we have to be diligent in that we have to seek the Lord deliberately at all times, whether you want to or not. You know, he tells us, he says, pray. He says, pray without ceasing. Yeah, he says, pray without ceasing. He says, this book of the law, read it day and night. Yeah, read it day and night, meditate upon it and observe to do it. He didn't say when you feel like it. it. He didn't say when it was convenient. He didn't say, you know, whenever you get the, the, the mojo. No, he said this book of the law, read it day and night, meditate upon it and observe to do it. Not when you feel like it, but all the time. He said, pray without ceasing. Not when you feel like it. Not when there's an issue to be prayed for. Not, no, he didn't say that. He said, pray without ceasing. And he said, read this word. And so this is something that we must do as people of the living God. If we must stand, if we must stand, yeah, we're going to have to train ourselves that regardless of how we feel, regardless of where we are mentally, emotionally, yeah, we have to get into this word. It is this word that's going to keep us. It's this word that's going to mature us. It's this word that is going to be perfected in us so that we will become like our father. Amen. So that, that, that image and likeness that he created us in initially will begin to be reflected will begin to be seen as it is now we are so um and i'm speaking of myself right now we're so taken up with everything you know um that happens around us um the disappointments the the, the anxieties the 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 uh grief the loss the hurt you know sometimes it's 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 anger yeah, let's say it for what it is. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's resentment. Sometimes, I said it before, it's disappointments. It's different things, you know, that affect you and affect your heart. And you're like, you know, I can't even bother with this. <laughs> Not today. I'd like to just, I have my time. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes life gets to you. You know, sometimes life gets to you and, 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 and really affects you. On, on different levels, but you have to make the choice. I have to make the choice. What am I going to do? What am, am I going to allow it? Am I going to allow life to, to, to just um, get me down? Am I going to allow um, the fiery darts of the enemy to, to, to dissuade me, to cause, to deter me? No, right? No, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to find that word. I'm going to read that word. I'm going to do what that word says. Yeah, I'm going to do what that word says. And I know that God is faithful. His word cannot change. So when I stand on this word, regardless of how I feel, I know that something is happening in me. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it seems like. Like, uh, nothing's happening. Yes, it is. Yes, it is because it's not a natural work. See, it's not a natural work that's recognized on a natural level. You will recognize it naturally when, 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 when it begins to, to build momentum in your life. Yeah, when it begins to build momentum. When you begin to stop looking at your feelings, stop checking in to how you feel and what you see and start looking at what the word says, even as it unfolds in your life. Amen. Um, there's a scripture for that, but um, my, my, my. 
Ah, it's Isaiah, Isaiah 12. Let's run there. Our scripture for this morning is Proverbs 9, remind me. But let's run over there to um, Isaiah 11 and see what it says real quick. Yeah? Uh, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight, yeah? My delight, my delight is in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. So we're getting to that point where we don't decide by the, by the sight of our eyes or, the, or decide by the hearing of our ears. We're getting to the point, the Lord is taking us to the point where our delight is in the fear of the Lord. Where no matter what's happening in our lives, we, 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 we don't um, indulge the flesh. We live in this world. We live in this flesh. We need this flesh to experience the world. Yes? But we don't indulge the flesh. We understand that our lives are hidden in Christ. Not in the flesh. In Christ Jesus. Amen? And so we, the more we spend in the word, the more the spirit of, of, of the Lord rests upon us. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Yeah, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We spoke a couple of weeks ago about the fear of the Lord, about wisdom. Yes, about knowledge of the Holy One. We spoke about that the other day, right? Um, I think that scripture comes from uh, Proverbs 9, where we're going back to, right? And um, it says the delight, his delight, my delight, your delight should be in the fear of the Lord, not in how we feel. Not in how we feel. Not in our emotions. Don't get caught up in that. That's part of the human experience. But it is not the, 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 it is not the, 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 the crown of the human experience. The crown of the human experience is to have the spirit of the Lord rest upon you. Is to delight in the Lord. Delight in his ways. Delight in his word. Amen. And that last part, what says, um, and he shall not judge by the side of his eyes, meaning you won't, you won't let what you see sway you either way. You will be immovable. Yeah. Strong, flat footed, grounded in the word of God. And you will not decide by the hearing of your ears. You will not allow your senses to dictate the path of your life. Amen. You will not dictate your senses, yeah, whether emotional or physical senses, to dictate the path of your life. All right, we're going to jump over there to uh, Proverbs 9. And we're going to go to verse 5 and 6. Or is it 4 and 6? All right, and it kind of adds into what I was saying just now. That's kind of funny, right? Anyway, let's start at verse 4. It says, whoever is simple, let him... Let him turn in here. So at the first part of this scripture, you see wisdom getting her stuff together, man. I like Proverbs because it talks about wisdom as a person and it, it's like her. <laughs> so it says, um, you know, she's built her house and she's hewn out her seven pillars. She slaughtered her meat and she mixed her wine. She furnished her table and she sent out her maidens. So wisdom has sent out her maidens, right? And she cries out from the highest places of the city. So wisdom is always there. There's always that voice of wisdom. But we have to incline our ear. There we go again, inclining our ear to hear. Because here she is. She's crying out from the highest places in the city. And she's saying, whoever is simple, whoever is simple. I don't know about you. I get it. Listen. If I allow myself, Debbie gets really simply simple, okay? I don't know about you. You're probably one of, you know, the, but me, no. If I allow myself, if I don't um, compel myself to stay in the word and to do what the word says, yeah, I, I can go base real quick, right? So whoever is simple, and I consider that to be me, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, come, eat of my bread. Now we know that when we hear bread in the scriptures, um, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life, right? And it's, it's for, he's foreshadowed and he's um, 
current in the New Testament. But when you hear bread, you know that you're talking about Jesus, the bread of heaven, right? So <clears throat> if you are simple, let him turn in here. And he who lacks understanding, she says to him, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Yeah, I love that part. It says forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding or go in the path of understanding. See, here, wisdom is making it so simple. Wisdom is making it so simple. It's telling us, it's telling us literally, if you don't have me, then you are simple and you need to ask for understanding. If you lack it, ask for it. And the scriptures tell us earlier, or, or, or is it, yeah, the scriptures say, if you lack understanding, ask God, ask him, ask your father and he will give it to you. Amen. So God is literally telling us here, is reiterating, ask me for wisdom. I will tell you the way to live. The way you've been living has you um, degenerate. The way you've been living has you living below my standards for you. The way you've been living, giving into the flesh about everything, brings you into a state of discontent. Yeah? You're not living your best life. I don't care what you have. I don't care where you are. I don't care who you know. If you don't, if you're not operating in wisdom and understanding, you're not living in your best. You're, you're living below what God has created for you. Yeah? We're living below what God has created for us. And so he's inviting us. He's inviting us through wisdom. He's saying, come. If you lack understanding, come eat of my bread. What's the bread? The word. Jesus, the word of God. Eat of this bread. This is where wisdom is. And in earliest, in earliest um, Proverbs, he says, incline your ear. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying to you. And that's why it's crying out from the highest point. He wants you to listen. He wants you to give your ear to the instructions that are found in the word and not only listen to it, not only hear it, but ingest it. Let it become a part of you. Let it become a part of you. We know that whatever we ingest, the, um, you know, the famous slogan says, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. So if you're eating mess, then you are a mess. Yeah. But if you're clean, eating clean and healthy, then you're clean inside and you're healthy. Right. And so what am I saying? If you're taking in all that mess, that negativity, that 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 baseness that is out there in the world, that's on your TV, that's on Netflix, that 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 permeates um, social media and, 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 and everybody's mind. It's like a herd thinking this negative thing that is happening now. Right. So if you allow that to permeate, if you allow that to get inside of you, then that's who you are. I don't care what you think. It's just the truth. If you allow darkness and negativity to permeate and to, 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 to come inside of you and fester, that's who you are because you are what you eat. And, 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 and Proverbs 9 is saying, come eat of my bread. Come eat of my bread, the word of God. Amen? And drink of the wine I have mixed. This is not wine that's going to intoxicate you. This is wine that's going to nourish you. Yeah? It says, forsake foolishness and live. Now, to me, it's funny how this, how this part says, forsake foolishness and live, comes right after he says, come eat my bread and drink of my wine. So does the bread and the wine that we're drinking and eating of, does that impact the level of foolishness? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Does that impact the level of foolishness? That is, that, is, that is present in your life. Yeah? So does the word of God, and I would say yes, of course the word impacts the level of foolishness and the, 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 the quality of your life. Yeah? The quality of your life. See, we make decisions based on what we know, based on our level of wisdom. And if the decision you're not making is, if the decision you're making is not a quality decision, 
that is informed by the word of God. I don't care how good it looks or sounds. It's going to bring you to, it's going to bring you full circle back to the same spot, wanting the same thing that you wanting. And, and you know, it's not easy to explain. It's not easy to explain to a person who doesn't understand, right? But how could Paul have said everything that I had, everything that I worked so hard for, my education, my status, my everything, I consider it rubbish. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. And I throw it away. I throw it all away for the privilege of being, you know, here with the Lord, for the privilege of serving God. And, 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 and to us, we can't understand that. We can't understand that. But I bet you something, Paul got a taste of this bread and he drank some of this wine. Yeah, he inclined his ear to wisdom and something clicked, it changed. And Paul understood all of this is foolishness. All of this has been foolishness. He came full circle, man. He's like, this is not worth it. This is not worth it. If Jesus isn't in it, then it's not worth it. And he said, I throw it all away. Throw it all away. Just so I can worship my king. Isn't that amazing? That is so amazing. So he says, forsake foolishness and live. And God promised us. He said, you will have abundant life. I will give you abundant life. Yeah? I will give you abundant life. And when Paul said it, Paul said, listen, I've thrown out everything. I've poured out everything. There's nothing left. He had lived abundantly. <laughs> I can just imagine the things Paul did and the, 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 the things he got into, you know, for the glory of God. But at the end of it, man, he was, he did not, he did not um, regret any of it. He did not regret giving up his life. He did not, he didn't regret any of it. He said, listen, yes. Yes, I've run this race. <laughs> oh my goodness. Paul is a trip. Paul said, I've run this race. Yeah. And now I'm at the end. I'm going to meet the Lord. I'm going to meet Jesus. Yeah. So he says, forsake foolishness and live. Live that abundant life. Go in the way of understanding. Go in the way of understanding standing and if you go down a little bit you know to verse 10 of that same um, chapter it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom we've done this before right and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding you will not understand you will not have full understanding I don't care how much education you have until you first have knowledge of the Holy One until you first have knowledge of the Holy One you will not have understanding. Ah, this scripture, just these two verses, huh? Just these two verses, Proverbs 9, verse 4 and 5. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, come eat of my bread, drink of the wine I've mixed, forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Yeah? Seek out the Lord. Seek his wisdom. Yeah? That goes back to what we were saying in Jeremiah 6 verse 16. Show us the ancient paths. Show us the ancient paths. And listen, our flesh doesn't want it. <laughs> our flesh wants no part. I can talk. My flesh doesn't want it. My flesh wants no part of it. And that's the truth. I will not lie. But I know that this word... This wisdom, this bread that he's offering, this wine, ah, ah, is life, is life, is life, it's life. And you know, the Lord said um, in the scriptures, see this day I put before you life and death. Choose life. He places it before you. It's a choice. It's a choice. And he gives us that choice. And he says, choose ye this day. Which one are you going to choose? Life or death. But then in his wisdom, he says, listen, choose life. Choose life. 
I choose life today, Lord. I choose life. I choose your wisdom. I choose to hear your voice. I choose to eat of your bread and I choose to drink of your wine. I choose, Lord God, to walk in your path, to know your way, to follow your patterns, God. I choose you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Deb Morris, your spirit poet. I'll see you here again tomorrow. God bless you.